Hello everyone and welcome back to my Galileo 6.4x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we will try to get a Kerbal into orbit around Gale and to that end I'm modifying the previous rocket that we used to try to get Jeb into orbit but obviously we needed a bit more Delta V than we had before. We're still going with the same basic staging at the top though dumping a little bit of a blater and I tried to come up with some interesting shenanigans uh, for the lower stages, I tried some uh, various arrangements of liquid boosters. I tried to sort of make a proton thing where they're not really boosters, but they're sort of integrated. And so I ended up with those little druid engines integrated. So those aren't, the inner bits aren't boosters, but we do have boosters on the outside. Those are the H2 boosters, SRBs that you've seen before. But uh, there's really only one set of boosters. The rest of it, even though they're other cylinders, are part of the core. And the reason for that is because, of course, we've got a limited fuel tank size, so I couldn't make the fuel tanks larger, larger than 1.5 meters in diameter, hence the additional strap-on fuel tanks, even though they're not going to separate. So here we go with the H2 SRBs uh, rocketing us to high thrust weight ratio, pass, well, well past the speed of sound, probably past Mach 2 right there. Uh, of course, uh, separation of them, not so good. We didn't have separatrons on them, and they did have fins, so their aerodynamics was a little bit weird. But anyway, uh, amazingly, we do get them back, though actually the SRBs themselves provide no value getting them back. You might have seen e to the negative 5 on that, which means 10 to the negative 5th, basically zero value. Basically, all we actually got back was the parachute and the decoupler. But anyway, this stage worked pretty well, this druid stage. And it's got parachutes as well, so we'll try to recover that. This LVT-45 stage, our second main stage, does have parachutes on top, but there's no way we're going to recover it with as fast as it's going to go. So we should probably dump those parachutes. Here we are at the end of the LVT-45 burn. Everything seems to be going nominally, and uh, it looks like Jeb might make orbit this time. So that's the end of that. You can see a surface velocity of 4,000 meters per second. So we really only need about 2,000 more to get to orbit. And the final stage does have that with its extra loud engines. I made the point that the smaller the engine is in KSP, it seems the louder it is. These are exceptionally loud engines, especially given their size. Uh, we did have to pitch up a bit to make sure that we had the time to do the burn. They are also small engines burning a lot of fuel. Uh, you'll know parachutes on the service module because we will try to recover it. It does have a controller as well and you can see the heat shield too. So it's got its own little heat shield. It'll come down separately and the pod will come down on its own. That for safety's sake. Right now we haven't upgraded the astronaut complex though I will solve that problem by the end of this episode. And so we couldn't do EVAs, we could only do a crew report and then bring Jeb back down. So there's retro burn to about 70 kilometers and then the separation of the surface module because I didn't uh, orient it normal wise uh, left us with a periapsis about 62 which is still safe. Of course, I think it's still safe, we will uh, see the reality of the situation but that would be safe around Earth so it'd be really bad if for some reason it was not safe around Gale here at 6.4 times the size of Kerbin, which is about 64% uh, the size of Earth, let's say. Maybe 60%. So Jeb looks alright, and we used about half of our ablator, a little bit more than half of our ablator. This one had full ablator on, it was only the service module that had some ablator dumped. And so we'll have to keep an eye on that when it comes to uh, higher flung missions like to the moon. Well, you know, to IOTA and such. Alright, well, we're down. We might need better heat shields, but for now, Jeb can go outside, do an EVA down here. We don't need to upgrade the astronaut complex for that. And get some more science. Plus probably a ribbon or two. There we go, Gale's Highlands. So we got the world's first milestone, return to surface from orbit, and back at the space center, Jeb got his experience and ribbons, and we were ready to go for the next thing, but I didn't really have any interesting contracts. Uh, we've still got the Vanguard 1 contract, but that requires solar panels, which we have not unlocked. And I picked up the Explorer 1 contract because we were going to do that anyway, that's just getting to orbit with a probe. 
So I decided to go ahead with something that they didn't have a contract for, which was recovering a probe with some goo. And so this is a goo recovery probe. And you can see parachute on top, heat shield, and we're going to try and build a custom rocket for it. Technically, there was a real historical mission for this sort of thing. That's Discover 13. You can see me highlight it there, but it requires, uh, I think, Luna 3 to be complete. And it has, there's no relationship to Luna 3, but it just so happens Luna 3 happened before Discover 13, and that's how the historical progression pack works. But that's sort of annoying because Discover 13 was actually a CIA mission uh, to take photographs and recover the, uh, the probe that took the photographs. But... Um, yeah, it doesn't really depend on the Soviets going to the moon with a probe. Uh, the two things could have happened independently. They didn't require each other. But anyway, um, just because Discover 13 happened after Luna 3, that's what we have to wait for. So with this rocket, we're trying for a four-stage rocket uh, with a Mu booster at the bottom because the Mu booster has less, it has less ISP than the H2 one, but it has better thrust, and we wanted the thrust. You can see we're at a very low amount of sea level thrust here, 1.17 thrust to weight ratio. A little bit of drop there, and then it picks up. It turns out though that I've uh, somewhat violated one of my rules of staging, and that's that I really don't like staging while going through the speed of sound and heading through max Q. And that's what we do here, and sure enough, as the LV T45 lights, we flip. Um, I, I try to avoid staging at that point, but in this case, it couldn't hold it. It was on Smart ASS, you can see, but that wasn't good enough. But we got back, but the Delta V lost definitely hurt our ability to get to orbit. That was especially true because the upper stages were relatively low in thrust to weight ratio. And we're still relatively low here. We're still in the, well, reasonably thick part of the atmosphere. Even though it's indicating we're in the upper atmosphere. There's still plenty of atmosphere to go here, so uh, having such low thrust does not help. You can see I'm getting some goo readings. We're planning to recover them this time instead of just transmit, so it's possible to redo the experiments and get the extra points. This engine in particular, while having a great ISP, obviously not so good on the thrust, so I decided to light the radial engines that we have at the top, good thing they're radial, very convenient, um, to help us get a boost and more time to apoapsis. And after they're on for a bit, I stopped them by locking the tanks, uh, rather than trying to manually switch them off. I learn about the ins and outs of Ampere, well at least as far as the whole reserved power thing is concerned. So you can see me having it up there and testing things out and seeing how that works. In the end, it was to no avail, we didn't have enough Delta V. Uh, using the extra thrust from these engines diminished their Delta V and hindered our ability to get to orbit, but we were still gonna come back down with the goo experiments. Uh, here trying out the reserve power thing, of course. So yeah, we should get some science from this as long as the probe survives. It's a harsh re-entry, but not as fast as like just shy of orbit. We weren't going as fast as we could have been. So it's, it's looking okay. The ablator, not so much boiling off here, or peeling off, whatever it does. Yeah, didn't use too much ablator there. So we, we really didn't do Discover 13, which had to get to orbit first. But we did do um, toss into space and recover the vessel kind of thing. And you can see extra atmospheric scans. So science will be done. There is science. We can get a recovery of a goo observation while flying at Gale. We haven't done that, obviously. So very good. Parachute worked. And splash down. Okay, so we recovered. We got science, uh, only 14.3 science, but it's still something. We've only got a total of 40.1, shy of what we really need in order to get a new science. I unlocked the astronaut complex right there, decided to spend on that. I uh, checked on the next part of that, but I decided we didn't really need that upgrade yet. Uh, but I did unlock the upgrade for the R&D building, which would allow us to have a science limit greater than 100. Uh, that means unlocked sciences that require more than 100 science. So yeah. Next up, I decided to send Valentina up on the same rocket, the DB7 that we launched Jebediah earlier on, 
and try to do the EVAs, right? Because now we've unlocked the astronaut complex. Of course, I didn't actually do anything to solve the little problem with the SRBs being iffy. They don't have any Sceptrons on there right now, so we're just going to have to deal with that and hope that the core can withstand the collision of those SRBs. Uh, you'll note that I do throttle down the core during this bit and then throttle up just before the SRBs separate. And they separated a little bit better this time than last time, so that's nice. Maybe we were just angled better at prograde or something. Okay, so this is the first stage core, which we do plan to recover. And separation, there we go. LVT-45 uh, sort of scorching them a bit, but no harm done. And now at the end of the LVT-45 burn, we seem to be well suited for orbit. I didn't remove those parachutes, I should have. And the service module, completing orbit. So it's a weird system, but it certainly works. It does the job, so that's good. That's what we want. Uh, hopefully we'll unlock larger tanks and then we'll be able to create a better system. We need to do that ASAP. Another thing we can unlock is the LV-909, the Terrier engine. Now here I encounter a weird problem. Uh, I can't do the EVA reports, and I also can't control Valentina, and I can't switch vessels, and I can't get Valentina back in. This was very, very distressing. So B for board doesn't work. A space for let go doesn't work. Uh, no EVA controls or anything like that. Can't move her up or down. And I uh, can't switch vessels. Right there, I just tried F9. And actually, F9 is also bound to the filters that I was using. So it turned the filters off at the same time as I was trying to quick load whatever I could quick load. No luck there. Um, we did check that it did register that we have done a spacewalk, so first spacewalk is done, according to the messages. The only solution seemed to be to restart the game, so I did restart the game. Obviously there's a weird glitch lingering here, but um, got the EVA report there, and then proceeded to another location to try it again, and indeed, over the mountains, we did get an EVA report, and so success there, and I proceeded. And once again, got an EV report above Gales Highlands. No problems. But you might, you might see where this is going. Eventually, eventually, we encountered a situation where Valentina couldn't do the EVA report and once again couldn't get into the pod. So I'll have to leave it here because obviously I needed to end the stream in order to troubleshoot. I wasn't gonna do that live on Twitch. And yeah, a curious problem that still isn't entirely resolved. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.